Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. The US 30 has managed to post another positive uh, candle there. That brings its tally to about 30 uh, sessions with only three losses. Uh, we're slightly in the back no, for this morning, but we're quite close to retesting an all-time high at 17.895. Moving on to the UK 100, uh, firmly in the back foot, bearish engulfing pattern yesterday. We're moving lower again today. Actually, Germany 30 looks a little bit nicer than the UK 100, but the next potential support is at 66.86. Um, with the house pricing index coming out, you know, slightly worse than expected, but just showing a little bit of a slowdown. But um, yeah, it does it does look that the UK 100 is um, feeling a little bit of the pain this morning, and it's still dropping just as we speak. Not a huge directional move, but en enough to uh, put the bears in control this morning. Looking at Japan 225, we've got an ascending triangle formation right here, a potential ascending triangle formation right here. Um, yen's firm on the back foot. US dollar is aggressively moving against all other major FX pairs. Um, not on the back of any major macro news, but I can see cables dropping, your dollars dropping, and dollar yen is shooting up. So um, that weaker yen is helping to propel Japanese equities up to retest potential resistance at 17,496. So looking at that dollar yen position, what we had yesterday is that we bounced off potential support at 117 spot 36. Japan is battling an deflation uh, issue right now um, where the lower oil prices now are impacting the price of goods so um, the real real value of uh, goods and services are is actually dropping because of that and that's actually a potentially a bit of a, a headache they want to have a bit of inflation in Japan to help spur on a little bit of economic growth um, so we are bouncing this morning this is a, a bullish engulfing pattern potential resistance is at 118 maybe 119 so we are still in the middle of two ranges pressure still remain the Japanese could do with actually having a little bit of inflation instead but what are they going to do to do that especially when they're already talking about extra stimulus so dollar yen is a very interesting one uh, I would be kind of surprised if we broke 119 um, because we then we get close to 120 uh, and that's when things get a little more difficult for the Bank of Japan. I guess the big story is uh, going to be the OPEC meetings, Saudis um, really much dominating those um, those sessions and um, not having a cut in production and uh, you know they, they say it's to do uh, with trying to put some of the, shale, the US shale gas companies out of business. In reality if you consider the pain that Russia Venezuela and Iran are probably going through with oil down these prices, it feels so political rather than um, an actual supply and demand aspect. So broken through potential support at 70 spot 41, next potential support is at 64 uh, dollars. Things are the fundamentals are pretty negative in the short term. You know, this isn't going to change overnight either uh, for people that are thinking about getting in to crude oil right now. Bear in mind that that oversupply that's currently affecting the markets is not going to dry up overnight, and there's a lot of fundamental factors as to why this is getting pushed down even further. Keep your eye on any Chinese data like the PMI that's due out on Monday, uh, which might add an accelerant to this downward moving action. Bear in mind that we were off the session lows last night, but we have actually dipped a little bit lower already again today, and we're still in negative territory today. So um, $70 spot 40 is a cap, a potential resistance on any upwards movement. Uh, that needs to get broken before um, you would look to be a bit more bullish in crude oil. Gold's broken through potential support at 11.86. Getting close to that 21 uh, period SMA. If we do break and close below that, that opens up a move back down towards 11.37. I'm still not a massive fan of gold either direction, to be honest. It's a bit hard to read right now. Moving on to your dollar. Your dollar's back on the retreat. Next potential support, one spot 2367. And we do have some Eurozone data due today. We've got C CPI data. Um, as I said, the dollar is broadly advancing. Uh, and if we break one spot 2367, the next potential support is at 120. 47. So we do have a, a little bit of a, of a move there. If we break and close below that, I think that would be a significant technical break comp compounded by the fundamentals behind rising US rates and a potential cut in the Eurozone as all those economies are still flagging a little bit and all the uh, ECB monetary stimulus. The fundamentals are not pro euro dollar uh, at the moment. I'm finishing up with GBP USD. We've reversed course again, smashing three potential support, one spot 57.43. Short-term potential support remains at 155.94, but the longer-term potential support is at one spot 54.24. And we've already had the UK housing price um, data come out. A slight slowdown in, um, in house prices, still advancing, of course, but um, I'll probably say a, a, a slight slowdown. The year-on-year slow, uh, slowed down. Um, but if you look at the revision right here, it was 0.7 last month. We revised that back down to 0.5. So. 
the UK housing market certainly slowing down ever so slightly, uh, but an 8.5% growth year on year, I think, is still a significant milestone uh, for, for for the property market. It had a great two years. You're not going to get that. That you're not going to get these figures again next year. Keep your eye on the chart form as ever. Look at insights going forward. And if we fast forward just very quickly onto Monday, you can see you've got Chinese PMI, UK PMI, and US PMI. So Monday's pretty much PMI day. And join me then on Monday to find out what happened next.